In section 4.3, we'll do something similar to section 4.2, where in section 4.2 we had the probability of one thing or another thing happening. Here, we're going to look for the probability that two things both occur. So we use the word and here. So when you see the word or, you're going to use the addition rule. We talked about how there's the simple addition rule if the events are mutually exclusive, and then there's the more general addition rule if they're not. There's going to be a similar thing here. When we see the word and, we're going to have a multiplication rule. And in a certain case, we'll have a simpler multiplication rule. And then we'll have a general multiplication rule that applies to all situations, which is a little more complicated. But the pattern kind of follows what we did in section 4.2, where we have those two cases. So here at the beginning of the section, you can read through this. But I set this up with two examples, one where you flip a coin twice in succession, and we call these independent events because they don't affect each other. The coin doesn't have a memory, so after flip, you flip the coin once, the second flip is reset and it's independent, it doesn't depend on what you did earlier. However, if you take a deck of cards and you pull a card from the deck, and then you hang on to that card and select a second card, these are dependent because which card you drew the first time will change the probabilities for the second card. And so you can read through the details here of how that works, but basically you visualize what's left in the deck of cards, and depending on what you've got the first time, the deck of cards will look different for the second draw. So we have independent events, and we have dependent events. So there's this definition here of independent events, and you can read through the details there, but basically if the two events impact each other's probabilities, they're dependent, if they have no effect on each other's probabilities, they're independent. So there's a few examples of dependent and independent events, and you can read through and watch the video for that example for more details. So if the events are independent, just like with the addition rule, we have a simple multiplication rule. If you can calculate the probabilities of each of them happening, the probability that both happens, you just multiply those two together. And this can work with more than two events. If you have three or four or five, you can multiply them together in a string like that. So that's the simple multiplication rule. If they're independent, you just multiply their probabilities and you're done. So there's a few examples you can follow through and again, watch the videos for those specific examples and read them carefully. But these first few are with independent events. Then with dependent events, things get a little bit more complicated but once you know what you're doing, it's fairly straightforward. What you do is you think about the sequence of events where the first event is independent of anything else. The first event starts and you can calculate its probability. So for instance, drawing two cards and looking for aces twice, you can think about the first draw. The deck is reset. It's the standard 52 card deck and you select one card, you can find the probability that that card is an ace. Then you're thinking about the sequence of events. You want the second card to also be an ace. What you do is you assume that the first one was an ace. You assume that the first event did happen. And then under that condition, we talk about the conditional probability. Under that condition, you find the probability that B happens. So for instance, drawing two aces in a row, you would think about what's the probability of drawing an ace the first time. That would be 12 out of 52, since there are 12 aces. And then assume you drew an ace the first time, and think about what's left in the deck. Now there's 51 cards, 11 of which are aces. And so the probability you would draw an ace the second time, assuming that, or given that, you drew an ace the first time, would be 11 out of 51. And you can see um, how that works. Sorry, it's 4 out of 52 and 3 out of 51. I was thinking of face cards, not aces. So with aces, it would be 4 out of 52 and then 3 out of 51 for the second one. So that's the general multiplication rule, that if you want the probability that two things happen, you would start with the first one. That one doesn't depend on anything else because nothing's happened yet. So you do that one on its own, and then you assume that happened, and you calculate the probability of the next one happening. If you want to string three or four together, you would then kind of follow that pattern and assume that everything before has happened the way you wanted it to, and then you find the probability of the next one. 
Basically, in short, if you didn't draw an ace the first time, there's no chance you're going to draw two aces. So the only way you can draw two aces is if you did draw an ace the first time, and then you draw one the second time. So you can uh, kind of follow through that. Again, this is just like the addition rule. It's the general rule that applies whether or not these events are independent. So then you can look at several examples here of um, events that are not independent. Pay special attention to example six here. This one has uh, several examples and it kind of goes through lots of variations. Um, if you can answer this one, any one in the homework uh, like these will be pretty straightforward. So pay special attention to that example. It has uh, kind of all the details that you need. The last thing we do in this section is kind of focus for a second on just that conditional probability by itself um, without thinking of it in the context of the probability of this and that. So we can just think about the conditional probability by itself. And there's a way to do that with a contingency table, like this one we've seen before, where we can find the probability of selecting, for instance, a female student given that the student is left-handed. And what that means basically is that you restrict yourself just to the left-handed students, given that the student is left-handed, and within that group, you find the probability that you select a female student. And you can go through that example and others like it um, on the homework to get more of a sense of what's happening there, but that uh, is really all you need to know for the ones like it. And then here at the end there's a little discussion of um, medical tests with false positives and false negatives. Um, it's an interesting example to go through, so you should read that just for your own interest um, to see kind of how that works and uh, get a sense of how this, given this conditional probability, um, applies to different situations. So that's section 4.3. It's all about the multiplication rule when you have the probability of A and B. Again, there's a simple version and there's a more general version. And then in the more general version, we have this idea of conditional probability introduced, which we can also kind of focus on on its own.